how did the Pakistan Air Force acquire the F-16 and how did you uh, get to fly it? So tell us your story on the F-16. I was in uh, Mirages at the time. This was 1985. Mm -hmm. uh, we got them in 1983, uh, the F-16s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went over from the Mirages uh, to fly the F-16. Uh, the things that struck us, you know, because we'd been flying Everyone in the Air Force had been flying conventional fighters, and conventional means everything that on the F-16 was unconventional. Mm -hmm. Starting with the seat, you know, it's 30 degrees reclined. Mm -hmm. The stick movement was one sixteenth of an inch in each axis. I mean, you move it forward, it goes one sixteenth of an inch and one sixteenth back. So when you do a loop, actually one sixteenth is just a wee bit, and uh, you just sort of it was, it was more like a pressure transducer mm -hmm. that senses pressure and it would just go around and do a loop. That was stunning, that was amazing. And the fact that it was on the right side, we had actually a elbow rest, like you have in the car door, uh, you know, to rest your arm. So you could just rest your arm over there. And the first time we flew, we thought this was the most natural thing. And we wondered why the stick was ever placed in the center. Mm -hmm. uh, in the conventional mechanical or hydromechanical uh, controls, why wasn't it here? So it was very natural for us. Mm -hmm. And then the bubble canopy on the Chinese fighters, you could just see the neck. From outside, you could just see the neck of the pilot, neck and above. Here, if you had the seat up, an outsider on the ground could actually see part of your leg also. <laughs> if you had it higher up, because your feet were also about seven or eight inches higher than normal. They weren't on the floor. The other paddles were actually higher. So combined with 30 degrees recline, and, uh, side stick and a bubble canopy and of course an unstable aircraft as you know it was unstable mm -hmm. uh, the center of gravity uh, in all aircraft is ahead of the center of pressure here it was behind so that was quite something and as we all know uh, controllable only with the help of computers flight control computers uh, otherwise of course it can't fly mm -hmm. and uh, that was something again unique four of them four computers so there's no question of failure and if it did you had this uh, hydrazine gas fired generator which would kick up hydrazine gas uh, is like TNT it explodes but it's a controlled explosion they could use TNT also to fire up the generator but it will blow up this gas is safe enough it, it sort of uh, get, comes in contact with the air and it's a mini blast in a controlled in a, in a tight space and it spins up the impellers of the generator mm -hmm. and uh, it has, I think, uh, enough gas to get you back within about 15 minutes, 10 or 15, 12 minutes of flight, and you can just uh, rush back to a safe, uh, close by runway. But never happened. We've had mm -hmm. false failures, false uh, uh, firing up of the hydrazine without any problem of the flight control. That's a maintenance issue with the hydrazine mm -hmm. uh, container. Otherwise, no flight control. We've never had, not in the Pakistan Air Force, none that I know of. Uh, in any other air force, the four flight controls, that, the four computers that failed, no such thing. The first, I was there in the squadron, the first crash that took place uh, on the F-16, I wonder if you know about it, uh, two of my course mates, they were flying in the dual seater in the F-16, mm -hmm. and there was a night mission, and as they rolled for takeoff, something hit the aircraft with a thud, and next, the aircraft was on fire, huge flames, and they both had to punch out. Mm -hmm. And we discovered that these were wild boar that had struck the aircraft nose wheel and sheared off the nose wheel. The nose went down. When the nose went down, the drop tanks also started to graze the runway. Yeah. And uh, they turned red hot in no time and uh, they blew up. And the pilot had to eject. First loss. And uh, later, uh, we had to build a wall around the whole base. And earlier, there had been some suggestions that let's build a wall. We have uh, wild dogs and occasionally wild boars mm -hmm. on the runway, which could be dangerous. And they said, we don't have enough money. And when we lost the F-16, in one month, a wall, I think, uh, 11 kilometers length, wall about six, seven feet high, all around the base was built within one month. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, hard way, uh, learned a lesson, uh, the hard way in the F-16. Yeah. Uh, now, comparing, like I told you, comparing uh, the F-16 with conventional fighters, everything was different, just about everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, not that we had to unlearn anything, but uh, we had to sort of 
learn new things which had not been seen on any other fighter mm -hmm. uh, that way. And since we were amongst the early lot at that time, 85, 86, 87, these were the early years, not just in Pakistan Air Force, in fact, the American Air Force got them in, I think, 79 and 80. Mm -hmm. In fact, their squadrons were also still equipping with the F-16s like we were. Mm -hmm. So it was very modern for its uh, time. Mm -hmm. uh, extremely safe aircraft, other than, you know, the, these uh, silly accidents. Mm -hmm. The few that we've had, were mostly pilot factors, one or two, one disorientation, one bird hit, things like that, but nothing to do with the aircraft. Yeah. Extremely uh, reliable system, the engine itself. Mm -hmm. So no issue with that. In fact, design-wise, I think it's one of the best designed aircraft in the world. I'd, I'd say that uh, if I'd flown the Mirage 2000, no, if I'd flown the F-18, <laughs> these are modern. Of course, they're all viceless, very good aircraft, but then you start to have some kind of attachment with the mm -hmm. fighter that you've flown. So uh, I, of course, love it. And I got a chance to fly uh, last year after last I flew was in 1989, 30, 30 years ago, exactly 30 years ago. And one day the chief of staff, uh, he called me directly. He was one of my students at the academy. Mm -hmm. And he said, sir, uh, would you like to fly? I thought he was, you know, he wanted me for some conference at the air headquarters and he was sending a special aircraft for me. Uh, I said, yeah, okay, uh, when, where? He says, get your G-suit and helmet ready, <laughs> you're flying F-16. I said, okay, F-16 after 30 years was quite something, but uh, this uh, aircraft that I flew was the midlife upgrade uh, mm -hmm. F-16. Uh, the ones that we've flown were just uh, basic F-16 A's and B's and the upgrades that take place in, I think, 2011, 12 time frame. Mm -hmm. So uh, here, the capabilities were, uh, I, I really can't sort of explain it because I haven't uh, read much about it. We had the sniper pod, we had the BVR capability, everything was data linked, uh, new uh, cockpit, new instruments and so on. So the capabilities immensely increased. I recall that the buttons on the stick and throttle, uh, each button had one or two functions, adding up to about six or seven functions on the stick and six or seven functions on the throttle. Now there's something like, uh, 20 odd on the throttle and 20 odd on the stick. Wow. And, uh, you know, at the end of the mission, I thought it was more like uh, a video game. You had to be savvy in a video game. And the psychomotor skills uh, now are the prime thing, uh, especially with the BVR capability mm -hmm. and with the data link where you can be linked up. I mean, uh, an AVAX aircraft can pass its information down to you, down link to you through data link. You can uplink your info, your radar info, or whatever info, or one of the sensors to the uh, radar flying up, or the ground radar, or the ground radar can pass it on to you. And the most impressive, you can pass it on to your formation members. Yeah. Uh, you locked up your formation members, they have got the radars to stand by. So you can just lock up and pass it on as you do on your mobile phone to your number two. So number two just gets a beep and it looks at the radar scope and says, ah, Somebody is locked up for me, and all he has to do is just, you know, get his bearings right and press the uh, missile release button. So the capabilities are immense. So that's a major change. So by the skin, it's a 16, but from inside, everything is really changed. New radar, new uh, sensors, all uh, fused mm -hmm. centrally, controlled by a better, more powerful fire control computer. The capabilities of the same F-16 are immense, and uh, as you must be knowing, the uh, life, structural life, was something like 8,000 hours initially, mm -hmm. and after the midlife upgrade, it's 16,000 hours. So double, yeah. 16,000 hours take, I think, uh, till the end of the, this century uh, to complete. Yeah. We've had uh, Mirages flying for 60 years, uh, 50, 50, 53 years now, uh, with a life of 5,000 hours only. So if it was 16,000 uh, hours, I think we'd be stepping into the next century. Yeah, I think so, yeah. So it's going to be around, so it's going to be around for some time. Mm 